Okay, welcome back to the Brush Gymnasium, and we're about set to do with our third duel in the Morgan County Triple Duel. The Brush Beaters will take on the Wiggins Tigers. If you just tuned in, uh, Fort Morgan Mustangs won over the Wiggins Tigers in the first duel, and that was 53-12. to 12. And then the Brush Beat Diggers just knocked off uh, the Fort Morgan Mustangs by a team score of 42-30. So that sets us up for our third duel here as we're getting set to go at 145. Bo Roach is stepping out for the Beat Diggers as he's going to take on uh, Dylan Donaghy. Get those tough Donaghy names there. Okay, Dylan takes a, snaps Bo's head down. Bo comes in with a double leg shot out of that and takes him down out of bounds so they're back to the center referee blows the whistle again and they're wrestling right on the B uh. both playing a little cautious right now Bo shoots in for a double gets in deep takes down as he right down to his back falls into a pick and step and or a Turk and now he's getting back points out of the situation Donaghy is working his way out of bounds via a, a bridge. The bridge is out of bounds, and they start over. Hit the three-point near fall. I didn't know if he got counter to five there or not. But. Yeah. Yes, he did. The score is now 5-0 for Rocha. Don, Don, Donaghy starts to attempt to sit out. Rocha grabs his ankle and brings him back in. Now Rocha's working on a cradle. He's got the cradle locked up, brings him over on his back. He's got to get that knee in the side. A bunch of them are wanting to just lay that knee on their back or underneath their back instead of taking it in their side. He does get three points out of it, and uh, Donaghy comes back around to his belly. He's bellying down. And then uh, Roach is working for a pick and step now. Donaghy works up to a to his feet, and then they work out of bounds. Uh, Bo's still in control, so Donaghy is down. Down in the match, score eight to zero with 55 seconds left in the mat in the first period. Bo giving up about 11 pounds out there. That last match, Carpenter Bo is getting a cheap tilt right now. He, him, and Carpenter were pretty well evenly sized, even though they're both 45 pounders. Did you just notice that? Bo's well, got him on his back, and he sticks him with a. I that wasn't a deep half, but it was uh, that cheap tilt worked right into him, held him on his back long enough to get the pin. Yeah, almost a stack looking move there. And beat Diggles will take it, and they'll take a six to nothing lead into the duel as we start this one at 145 pounds. As you move up one weight for each duel. And how about that? I was just going to take a look. Carpenter actually weighed in a little heavier today. Oh, did he? Oh, not much more. 147 and a half, I think, is what that says. It's going to be 142. Because if, yeah, the weight's 45. 142 and a half. Yep. And we're back underway as we go to 152 pounds. Cameron Lee on for the Tigers will take on Jake Morrow. Morrow ranked number three in the state on the on the mat rankings. She shot in for a single leg, but blocked by Cameron Lee on. And then rub four heads. Leon takes a shot. Come right back to the tie up. Leon stockier than uh, Morrow. Morrow's not a big 52 pounder. You know he weighed in right there. Tries a little sweep of the knee. That didn't work. They break apart. Give each other a good head tap. Kind of interesting to see the actual weights today. Leon certified weight at 138. He's wrestling 154. I don't know about him getting to 138. Must have had a growth spurt there. A wrist tie. There's Leon with a shot. Nice sprawl by uh, Morrow. Leon pretty deep with that single, but Morrow sprawls out, grabs an ankle. Now he's got a little crotch pry. Leon working that high single leg, and Morrow bounce out of bounds. So no score there. 41 seconds left, first period, no score. Morrow with his double leg shot. Big sprawl by uh, Cameron Leon. Morrow can't suck that in there. They reach in on a single. Gets his head out to the side. Lifts it up. Heel trips down Cameron Leon. And he's got the two point takedown. 
He's got the pick and step going there. Got a one count. Can't quite turkey him over with that. You know, trying to belly down and fight it off. There's a two count now. A little cross face or Turk in there. Oh, he steps over it. And Leon about to pop out the back side. But he won't. But he'll give up three near fall points. It'll be five to nothing for uh, gave him Jake one, Morrow. He gave him one point escape for that, so it's actually 5-1. Called that an escape. What? Yep. <laughs> Did I look away too quick? I thought I looked down when the buzzer rang. <laughs> okay. Okay, they're on their feet here in the second period. He didn't really call it an escape, Bob. He, Robbie just called it no control, so I, oh. I think there's a difference. Okay, something like that. <laughs> there's a shot by Leon and a big sprawl by Morrow as he's hooked the knee and a chin for a moment. Leon in the under position now. Morrow grabs the other ankle, gets uh, Leon Kind of down, Leon goes one way, and Morrow will go the other way. I've done that a couple of times. Leon in on the, hanging on to that single. Morrow can't kick that free, and we'll get a stalemate. Well, did they give him a free escape to start that period, maybe? No, no. Okay, <laughs> I was trying to figure that out. I shouldn't have looked away too quick. Just when he came out the back door, he just said he lost control, so he really didn't get an escape. He just, Jake, lost control. Okay. There's a nice little single by Morrow. Trips the Leon down and gets the takedown. He hits a cross face, traps that far elbow. With the right arm across the throat. The left elbow tied up. They reach for that pick and step, and Leon kicks free of that. More of post in that elbow. Looks like he's working the cross face cradle. Gives up on that now. He'll try the pick and step again. Gives up on that. He's working up for the barbed wire or iron cross, and can't quite lift Leon over with it. He'll get back in a little better riding position. Well, it's a little short and stocky. A little different build than Morrow. Morrow you know, gets based up, trying to tripod up. And Morrow's just going to kick him free. Going to make it 7-2. to two. Morrow right in on a little fireman's carry. And over goes Leon to hip, but he ran out of time in the period. It's Morrow's choice. Take the down position. So that's looking away from us in that Cardinal singlet with brush across the back and gold. Leon in on the left side. Morrow crawls forward and escapes. Not a whole lot of resistance there from Leon. No, there wasn't. Yeah. Morrow in on a double leg. It's caught with his head between the legs. He'll lift it up, go to a single leg. Leon with a whiz around on that. And he'll fight out of that takedown attempt. Back to their feet. Leon with a shot. Morrow trying to sprawl away from that. Leon's got a single leg locked up. Morrow reaches between the legs, kind of scissors his arms through there. He's got Leon's hips. Kind of turn to the mat, but Leon hanging up desperately onto that single leg, and he'll get a stalemate out of it. 116 on the clock, third period. So restart. And Leon drops down to a low single. Morrow, big sprawl. As Leon's way underneath. And Morrow hooks up an ankle, and the officials say, We're going nowhere with that. Let's just call it a stalemate. Restart. Morrow trying to pop the elbow up out of that tie up. Leon staying in front of him. And Morrow will back away from that. I lost my roster for Wiggins. Let's we'll see what grade he was in. Oh, nice low single, and Morrow puts Leon down for a two. It's here somewhere. This pile of stuff. 
Morrow out to the side. Oh, he walks around an arm bar, but can't keep Leon underneath him. She's trying to maintain control now. He's do a crotch pry. He's down to 15 seconds left. And Morrow. Leon's hanging on that single leg. Morrow's way out in front. We need to get another stalemate. Leon grabs on. He doesn't let go, does he? No, he does not. He does look pretty strong for some of the things Jake's trying to accomplish with him. He's he's fighting strength. We restart. We go on the right side. Leon tripods Ooh. up. Tries a Grammy roll. Gets, Gets crunched down. Stuff right in the center of that one. That had to hurt. Yes, I think it did. Ten to two. Beat diggers get a major decision out of that one. Let's give him a ten to nothing lead on the team side. And we have Stratman coming up for Brush. Tyler Stratman against. Uh, Where'd we go here? Matt Ewards. Oh, he got a should have a roster there. In the okay. Lead. All right, right here I do. Tyler Stratman against Matt Ewards. Ewards shoots in for a, a shot, and then uh, Stratman crunches him down and actually sprawls and spins behind, gets a two-point takedown. Now Stratman's working. Ewards does a quick sit-out, comes out for one. It's now a two-to-one match, Stratman in the lead. Ewards, Stratman's tall for it. 160 pounder, but yep. Ewert's is head taller than he yep. is. Ewert's working ahead more this time than he did his first match against the against the Morgan wrestlers. Stratman's got a good solid base. He's got wide stance and moving enough to stay out of any shot trouble. Right now they got wrist control and they're in a forehead to forehead tie up. Ewards is actually pounding the head pretty good. Now they're feeling each other out right now. They're just kind of there. Stratman takes a deep double leg shot and takes him down to the mat. Gets a takedown with 40 seconds left in the first period. Scores 4-1 to one Stratman. Stratman locks up a cradle. Now he needs to get hip to hip to bring him over. He's He's trying to muscle him over right now. Ewert's had a leg tied up. Uh, Stratman brings him over. gets a knee under his ribs. Not under in the ribs, but under, now he's got him in the ribs. He's uh, got him tight, but he's pretty lanky. He's got that that tie-up or the lock-up's pretty good. He just, Ewert's is too tall or lanky to pull him over. He's got to get hip-to-hip hip and reestablish that lock-up, which he's doing right now. Uh, six seconds left in the first period. Stratman's got the cradle and got him on his back again. No points were awarded the first time because he never broke the hold. Now he gets three points awarded and scores 7-1 to one at the end of the first period. Going into the second period, he works his choice and he takes down. He works attempts a, a sit-out. Stratman stops him. Stratman goes to a knee chop. And takes him. Now he's looking for that pick and step. He's hooking the leg and he misses that, but Ewert's belly's down and now he's working back up to a, his base. Stratman's got a ankle ride. Ewert's attempts another switch or turn in and Stratman stops him from that. Now Stratman's working on that arm. Got a one-on-one -on, -one on the right side, and he's got a stubby locked up on the left or on the right side as well. So working the cross underneath to get that cross arm and uh, work for a barbed wire, it looks like. Ewart's head is down, but he's got good wrist control underneath there, and he fights that off. Now Stratman goes from that to working at a cross-face cradle. He's got the arm blocked the, above the elbow. Now he works under, gets the cradle locked up again. Now he gets out hip to hip, see if he can run it over and knee in the side. He works is pretty frisky when he gets there. He fights pretty hard and kicks a lot on it. And we get a fall out of a cradle, near side cradle. Or a far side cradle, I'm sorry. Well, let's call it a 110, or excuse me, a 310 pin. 
Tyler Stratman will get the pin win. Three wins for the Beat Diggers in a row. Makes the score 16 to nothing, Beat Diggers. We'll have no wrestlers at 170. Because uh, Kyle Rosenbrock's going to step up and wrestle Garrett Walker. This ought to be a good one. As both wrestlers ranked. Yeah, let's, let's go right to the match. Walker's actually ranked it at the weight that wrestle know, and Rosenbrock's ranked at one one seventy. Right. So Coach wants to get uh, Rosenbrock a tough match going into regionals, I'm sure. I think if I remember right, Walker placed at state last year. So. Don't remember the whole thing. I don't though. remember either. Do you what year is Walker? Do you remember from her first round? Uh it's here somewhere in the pile. I couldn't find it earlier. Here it is. I know Rosenbrock is a sophomore, and then Walker is a senior. Walker's got a 25 and 3 record. Says he was a, on the credentials here. He's a state qualifier in 2010 and 2012. Rob. Okay. Okay, and Rosenbrock, uh, 20 and 2 record this year for the sophomore. And he plays basketball too, which is a new thing. He's got to spend a lot of time in the gym. Yes. Because they uh, did a lot of tying up and working around, but uh, hasn't been any real shots yet. A couple of head taps and some wrist tying. Showing a mutual respect right there right now. Still nothing. Worked out of a couple tie-ups. 25 seconds left here in the first period, so no score. Kyle's doing a lot of adjustment of his headgear. Yeah, there's a shot finally by Walker. And Rosenbrock a good sprawl, and he's hooked up a little cross face and an elbow, but Walker stays out in front. They come up kind of lateral drop position. And Rosenbrock works out of that, gets caught in a front headlock with one second left. And, uh, still no score. Referee wants to know whose choice it is. The uh, walk, uh, Walker's choice. And Walker wants a down position. Tied up 0 0. Rosenbrock in on the right side. And they're underway. Quick stand up by Walker. Rosenbrock lifts him up, dumps him down. There's a little Granby roll to a Peterson roll. And Rosenbrock trying to fight it off. Nothing nothing yet. Nothing yet. And Rosenbrock comes up on top, gets dumped over in a half Nelson. Chest to chest is uh, Garrett Walker going for the pin. As he, Rosenbrock's head kind of hung, and Walker has him for the pin. And Garrett Walker picks up the pin round 25 seconds into the uh, second period. Oh, that was... Uh, just a power move by Walker. Got a little, got high. He got high. No ankle or no, no anchor from the backside, and just Walker just grabbed his head and pulled him over. Okay, let's take 30 seconds for a timeout on 10:10 KSIR and KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back. While you're away, uh, Jake Donji uh, picks up a forfeit win for Wiggins and. Uh, no, oh, I, I looked at that wrong. And we got the points back with uh, Joe Carwin picking up a forfeit win for the Beat Diggers. Then we go to the heavyweights. Oscar Soto, not ranked in the state, but uh, he goes against Lane Vansky. And, uh, they tie, it, tie up ahead. ear to ear. Let Bob rifle through some of his paperwork there. He's got stacks of it. Oscar is a junior, and then uh, Vansky is a senior. Vansky's got a record of 19 and 6. Oscar's been in, in and out of the varsity lineup, a heavyweight, with uh, going against Jose Rodriguez. Oscar takes a Vansky to his back. He gets two, no back points, but he kind of just Vansky kind of gets low and and straight up and down, and Oscar just bowls him over and puts him into a like an underhook throw and. 
Bansky now is uh, belly down, and Oscar's working on a half Nelson. He throws him, actually Oops. throws a full Nelson in, and uh, Bansky gets a one point for, uh, illegal hold. The score's two to one with a minute 11 seconds left in the first period. Oscar 13 and Oscar, 8 on the year. Oscar just locked his hands as Vince Basky attempted to sit out, so Oscar locked his hands, and now he's got uh, got to keep him there until the referee feels there's no action, and then they'll stop the match and award the point. Scores 2-2 two to two now with 55 seconds left in the first period. Bansky number five in the state on the 2A side. Yes, he does a stand up and then he falls and hits a sit out and then he hits a reversal on Oscar. As he uh, now he's working that arm arm bar head and lever type move. He's uh, been a working Oscar at the moment. Oscar showed his belly down. Vance Vinsky is getting an arm bar in. He's got the arm bar now. He comes across the chin. He's bringing it the opposite way. Now uh, Oscar bases back up and gets out of that move, and Vansky works on a knee chop. Right now Vansky is uh, staying hip to hip with Oscar. Oscar gets bro- broke down. Now he's working back up. Vansky is senior, 19 and six coming into the day. Ranked number five in the state. Oscar's. Second period start, the score is 4-2 to two with Oscar behind. Oscar has given up penalty points and a takedown. So Soto, Oscar Soto chooses down to start the second period. Vinsky loads on the left side. Oscar does a quick attempt stand up. Vinsky brings him right back to the mat and works him right into an arm bar and turns Oscar Soto over in an arm bar. Looks like it's it's a pin with an arm bar. Twelve seconds into that uh, second period. And the Tigers coming back. So we got a 22-18 for the beat diggers as we go down to the little guys. Now we'll have three forfeits, I believe. Mm-hmm. Really tough to come back from that many forfeits is uh, Jason Moreno, Conrad Cole, Mackie Sandoval will all pick up forfeit wins, and we'll go to Zane Fowl in our last three matches. Zane will take on Skyler Co- Collins. Alec Peterson will get a forfeit. We'll end it up with uh, Armando Maltos Garcia taking on Tristan Keats. So we've only got two matches to go as uh, they're awarding the forfeits right here. Don't forget brush grocery cart. Stop, shop, and save with all your grocery uh, needs and snacks for game time enjoyment. 1302 West Edison and Brush. That's brush grocery cart. And hometown auto and hardware. They're the local Napa and Hardware Hanks and small engine repair shops. Stop by and let them help you today at 1305 Edison, hometown, auto and hardware. Okay, Garcia's, excuse me, uh, St. Fowl out there, and he's going to get a takedown, a little counter to Skyler Collins, and Collins on his back, but he's out of bounds. Fowl spins him around, had that pick and step in there, but loses him to that and they're going to be out of bounds. Did get two points out of that, though, Rob, so it's now 4-0. to zero. Oh, we give him the two near falls? Yep. I thought for a moment he was going to get an escape out of that. That's why I was waiting to say anything. <laughs> well, that one time he turned, he did give him, he, he didn't give an escape. He gave loss of control. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> However that was, here comes a cheap tilt, and Fowles got uh, Skylar Collins on his back, picking up some back points there. He maintains that hold, Skylar Tall and stringy, too. He'll get three near falls out of that, and they'll go out of bounds. Seven to nothing for Zane Fowl. 40 to 18 on the team side for the beat diggers. And we're back underway. Here comes another tilt, and over on his back goes Skyler Collins. And Zane Fowl picking up the tilt points. Not, no danger of 
hit and pin from there. But we get the uh, three near fall points that are potentially dangerous with the uh, chicken wing got a little bit high off, off that tilt. A restart. Ten points scored in the first minute of the first period, Rob. <laughs> this guy kind of runs out of bounds or crawls out of bounds as uh, Powell couldn't slow him down there. They'll have to restart. Uh, and on the right side, quick stand up by Skyler. And Collins is going to feel the wrist and walk away with the escape. Another tall, skinny wrestler. And there's a low single leg by uh, Fowl. Collins, Skyler Collins trying to fight it off with a little uh, thigh pry from the top. Fowl's kind of putting himself in the... The official said, I don't like that. Let's just call it potentially dangerous. We'll restart you. Same shot he used on the first two. Got that low single and worked. He just couldn't finish it that time. Couple of head taps. Does that. No single again by foul. Collins is a is a junior, and his record for the year is seven and wins eight losses. Says here also that he was a state qualifier in 2011. So... Okay, Fowles going to get another takedown. We're down to four seconds left. And he's picking up back points. He's piling up the points in this first period. Let's see, 15 to 1. Another, was that a three point near fall? Yep, it was. Okay, we're going to go on our feet. This guy faints a shot. Put his headgear back up. Chin strap come loose. They're kind of slapping at each other now, a little tie up. And foul pushes him out of bounds and roll out almost onto the gym floor. Well, the, at least where there's no mat. Yep. Okay, they'll restart. Foul with a long range shot. And uh, so he's kind of in a little old fireman's carry mode for second there. He's got the elbow hooked up and a knee and Skyler tries to step over this hold and uh, he, Skyler ends up on his back. Foul's got a half oh. Nelson sunk in there going for the pin and there it is. <laughs> That's a nice job. That would have been a tech fall if he didn't pin him, Rob. Right. <laughs> he had the tech fall criteria met but somehow uh, Skyler Collins ended up on his back and he's going to be pinned. As they won't uh, let you pin somebody if they're in the criteria. Oops, I missed the time on that. Early in the second period. There's another forfeit win for the Beat Diggers as Alec Peterson will pick up the forfeit win. It's 52 to 18 for the Beat Diggers going into the last match. And then we have Arnaldo Maltos Garcia wrestling Tristan Keith. And baby. Arnaldo, it's easier for me to say baby yes. Garcia, so that's usually what I do. <laughs> circle in the center circle right now. Arnaldo takes a low shot, picks it up, and comes up between the legs. Keith has actually got Arnaldo's ankles, and then Arnaldo squirts through the back door and picks up a two-point takedown, and then Keith stands up and gets an escape. Two to one with minute 30 seconds left in the first period. Arnaldo shoots another low single. Again, comes through the legs. His head's out. He, he's working. That's a draping cradle right now. That'll be close to illegal if he moves it a little bit. And they call it. They do call it illegal. We're from a draping head scissors to a illegal head scissors. So now the score is three to one. That was one point awarded. Keith does a shot right off the whistle, takes Arnaldo, Arnaldo down, and now he's ba Arnaldo back up to his feet, gets an escape, and scores four to three. Arnaldo is just a freshman. Again, Keith is a is a junior, nineteen and eight record. And Arnaldo, as a freshman, do you have his record there, Bob? It's here somewhere. Arnaldo is ranked at uh, 138 and 3A. Pretty high up there. What's he like, 17th, Rob? Yeah, Arnold, Arnoldo's 16 and 15 on the year with five pins. 
And at 138, he's ranked 17th in the state. So that's one of those Roy True rankings deep into the weight class. Arnaldo shoots in on a single leg and Keith sprawls. Arnaldo keeps a hold of the leg. They're flat out. Flat, they were. Now back up to their knees, both of them. Arnaldo holds on to that single leg and Keith has his ankle. Keith is trying to spin behind, but Arnaldo still keeps the ankle. All right, now no points are awarded. It's a good scramble. Arnaldo comes through. Keith comes through with a Salsahara type move, and uh, no points awarded. Arnaldo's a little slow to get back up. You go back to the center, score four to three. Brush with 17 seconds left in the first period. Keith takes the shot, and Arnaldo blocks with his head. Arnaldo's got the whizzer in now. Arnaldo falls, he's still got the whizzer in, and he gives up two points right before the buzzer. Arnaldo looks a little slow. Did he get a little stinger or something? He takes some blood time. Yeah, he was, when they went out of bounds out of that last scramble, he was uh, kind of limping a little bit, and now he's got a little cut in the lip or something there. Let's see, maybe he's going to the nose. I can't tell. That last takedown was given up right at the end of the, with tenths of the seconds left. It's one thing, as you learn, young, maybe his age might have something to do with that. Just Matt sense there, right on the edge of the, edge of the mat, and there was short time, short, short time on the clock. A little switch one way or the other could have prevented that from happening. Dave Yerry got cleaning up the blood across the way. Score now at the beginning of the second period is five to four, Keith. And Arnoldo's <laughs> chasing Coach Yerick across the mat and over to where Coach is to get get the rag and the, uh, get the little uh, sanitizer on his hands. So Arnoldo's ready. I'm not sure uh, Coach Yerick is ready yet. So we go to the second period. It's five to four. With Keith in the lead. This is the last match of the day. Is it? Or did, uh, yeah, this is 38. So Arnoldo deferred to choice. Keith took down. Keith attempts to hit a switch. Keith is moving, moving. He's scooting right now. And Arnoldo is trying to scoot with him. Keith does make it. Arnoldo falls right into the pick and step. He's got to work on his head, but he has that under leg caught there. Now he's working him pretty hard up top, but he's got to keep that leg if he wants to keep that pick and step. Um, he's working now. He's working. He's got that cross face and he's worked it to a cross face cradle. Keith breaks that and works up to his base. Arnoldo attempts to do a cheap tilt. Keith hits a sit out and then uh, Arnoldo works a, tries to throw over a cradle and Keith realizes no nothing's holding him so he stands up. And uh, Arnaldo drops to his ankle. He needs to pick it up or he'll get hit with stalling. He did call it. He did. He got hit with stalling because he's not working up. And now they're in uh, a predicament out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, some of those are just hard to describe. Right now they uh, kind of just called that. The referee called it a stalemate. They're bringing them back in. No loss of control, but Arnoldo did get called for stalling for not working up off that ankle. So uh, Keith stands up. Uh, Arnoldo uh, loses control, so it's now six to four with 55 seconds left in the second period. Arnoldo is uh, down. Keith attempts a shot, and they go out of bounds. We've got blood time again for Arnoldo. Got a little on the mat, too. Colorado Plains Medical Center. Accidents or illness can strike at any time, day or night. When they do, every second counts. As a level three trauma center, Colorado Plains Medical Center is ready to handle any kind of emergency. Colorado Plains Medical Center brings quality care to our community. And buildings by design and brush, they take pride in their workmanship and quali quality of their relationship with clients. For a free bid, call Pat Walter at 842-5837. Building today's business is buildings by design. Ready to start again. They both are neutral. 45 seconds left in the second period. 
Arnaldo stopped shooting and start was working ahead more. And Keith's been successful with some shots, so I bet they're. Arnaldo takes a deep shot and he gets get in. He's got on the leg, but he just doesn't keep driving. And the Keith is going for his ankles over over him, so he keeps collapsing. Him. Now Arnaldo's got his head between Keith's legs, working it up, but. Right now, uh, Keith's got the better position with the sprawl, and Arnold's head's in the mat. And uh, Keith collapses him down again by taking those ankles. Arnaldo comes through the through the legs again. A lot of action, but a lot of, not a lot of work, so the referee calls it a stalemate. Arnaldo shoots right off the whistle, comes through the legs of Keith. Uh, Keith grabs those ankles again. That's been the Achilles heel of the... Of the shots on from Arnaldo is keep just really just stops him by reaching over and grabbing those ankles, Rob. He's got a lot of length, and uh, Arnaldo's having a little trouble with that length. Cause... Scores four to six. Arnaldo take took down, hit a quick stand up off the whistle, and then he taken back to Matt and hits a switch on his way back down. Keep kind of lets him go, but earned also by Arnaldo. So now the score is six to five with a minute forty seconds left in the third period. One of the better matches of the evening for Brush and Wiggins. Uh, Keith does shoots a single leg, comes around and just blows through that and takes Arnoldo down and scores now eight to five with a minute thirty seconds left in the third period. They're on the out of bounds line. They go out of bounds and Arnoldo is down. And the dual score is Brush fifty-two, Wiggins eighteen. So this match won't really have a bearing on the outcome of the dual meet. Arnaldo does a quick stand up. Keith's got him wrapped up, really not taking him down to the mat. If we see, we'll get a stall call here on Keith. Now Keith gets a stall call and lets him go. So we got one point escape. The score is eight to six with Arnaldo losing with a minute, five seconds left in the third period. Keith's working the edge of the mat. Arnaldo's actually back towards the center of the mat. Keith takes a shot. Arnaldo shoots. Hits him with a pancake type move, but they go out of bounds. So come back to the center in a neutral position with 56 seconds left in the third period. Arnold takes a quick shot off the whistle again. Keith goes right back to those ankles. Now he's Keith's got the scissors around the body. Arnaldo's got to come around. Keith has got the legs. Arnaldo's sitting on his butt, but Keith is it's some of that funk college wrestling that you have, Rob, that the referees don't even know how to call it. Yeah. Arnaldo's working. He's got to get his legs free to come through the back door. And then now he gets two. Eight, eight to eight with 30 seconds left. He needs to hold him down and maintain control. Keith does a lot of flurrying, but doesn't get an escape. There's 24 seconds left in the match. The score is eight to eight. Both wrestlers have been warned for stalling. So uh, stalling could be a factor here. Although either one of them. I doubt it's going to let it sit there to finish out in the tie. They're both going to work for the win. Right now, Arnoldo's got an ankle dragging him down. Uh, Keith stands up. Arnoldo drops to the leg where he was before. He's got to pick it up here. Um, Keith has got his ankles again. They're back through the... Arnoldo's back through the back door. Keith is... Oh, Arnoldo got called for stalling for not coming off the feet. With seven tenths of a second left, so Arnaldo more than likely is going to lose this match because of a stall call. We got blood time with uh, seven tenths of a second left on the match. Oh man, that one hurt. But it's probably a proper call. A lot of times you don't see it called when it's going to decide a match. But he's been pretty consistent through the day with it. He has, and that. That's a that's a tough way to go because really, as a wrestler, it's hard to work up when they're bouncing like that when you're just holding on. So it's kind of one of those true judgment calls that can he work up? He wasn't just sitting there. But you're right, he has been consistent about, on how he's been calling the stalling today. Consistent whether we agree or not. Right? Nine to, nine to eight for the Wiggins Tiger. Well, that's the end of the action today. Brush takes both the duels. They beat uh, 
Wiggins 52 to 21, and they beat Morgan 42 to 30. So it was a good day for the Diggers. They did uh, avenge a loss that they had to the Morgan, the first dual meet of the, or first dual tournament of the season. Morgan beat Brush in a real close dual meet then, and now at the end of the season when. We have the guys back from football, and the lineup that we have, Rush comes through and makes it uh, an even an even year. Yeah, and they actually are missing two of their ineligibles, which uh, didn't help the uh, the cause today, but they win both duels and win the Morgan County Triple Duel. We'll be back and wrap it up in a moment on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back to uh, Brush High School Gym and the Beat Diggers knock off the Wiggins Tigers 52 to 21 on the team side, but uh, the wrestling side it was a lot closer. Yeah, there was a couple good dual ma- or good individual matches in there. That was a good match with Rosenbrock and uh, Walker. Just Rosenbrock got a little high and Walker took advantage of it and pulled his head under and, and pinned him. Okay, so uh, that. That was a match I was really looking forward to, but it didn't wor- work out that great for the Beat Diggers. But uh, Kyle, uh, only his third loss of the year. And it was to a quality wrestler, too, so that's... That's 10 pounds bigger. So yep. Coach said he's going to get everybody beat this year. That was his goal. And, he uh, achieved it, didn't he? Yeah, as far <laughs> as I know. <laughs> Conrad with two losses. Uh, and uh, Jake... Uh, had five losses. Kyle Rosenbrock now with three. Joe Carlin's only got four losses on the year. Uh, so it's been a tough season, and it'll be regionals next week in Eaton. Alec Peterson's He's got a, five losses too. So we got a few wrestlers that are in single digits, below five or five or below. So and, and not bad for a team dominated by uh, sophomores. Sophomore and freshman. So, who's the uh, Stratman is a senior, and uh, Jake Morrow is a senior. Uh, I think uh, Bo Roach is a uh, 11th grader. And then Oscar Soto is a junior. And the rest are all sophomores and uh, freshmen. So. Yep. The only freshman we have is is uh, Arnaldo Maltos Garcia. So. Majority of the roster is sophomores. Yep, so. and then uh, next year they'll have a couple kids being peppered in from the eighth grade that aren't doing too bad at the eighth grade level, and uh, that's going to help them with some of the lighter weights next year, I do believe. Okay, Jason Marino stepping in there as uh, he's seeing some of his first varsity action this year, so he, he didn't wrestle early in the year. He's a freshman, too, the six pounder, and this is his first year ever wrestling as well, so. He's right at that 106.6 pounds, so so he's got a lot to learn, but we'll keep him busy. Okay, we started at 145 with Bo Rocha, uh, getting a 120 pin over uh, Dylan Donaghy. Then uh, Jake Morrow with a uh, major decision 10 to 2 over Cameron Leon. Tyler Stratman uh, with a 310 fall over Matt Ewerts. And then the match we talked about, Kyle Rosenbrock. Uh, stepping up from 170, he could have taken a forfeit in a win, but he moved up to wrestle Garrett Walker. No wrestlers at 170. Loses by a fall at 225. And Jake Donner, Donner G, he picks up a forfeit win at 195. Joe Carwin gets those points back at 220 with a forfeit win for the Beat Diggers. And Oscar Soto, in a match, he went down and take. Went out, took Lane Vansky down, but then loses by a fall at 2-12 of their match as uh, Lane Vansky the victory for the Wiggins Tigers. Then uh, forfeits for Jason Marino at 1-6 for the beat, beat Diggers. At 1-13, it was Conrad Cole with a forfeit win. Mackie Sandoval with a forfeit win at 1-20. Zane Fowl ends up pinning Skyler Collins in the second period. In a wild match that Zane was leading about uh, 14 to 1, I think, going into the second period. And Alec Peterson, a forfeit win at 132. And then the match uh, we just called, baby Arnoldo Maltos Garcia loses 9 to 8 to Tristan Keith to wrap up the duel 52 21. 
the earlier duels. Fort Morgan wrestled Wiggins and uh, knocked off Wiggins 53 to 12. Uh, then the Brush Beat Diggers against Fort Morgan. The Beat Diggers win the duel 42 30. So, pretty much wraps up our coverage. We'll see if Coach is going to come up. Let's take a couple minutes and we'll be back with more on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back to Brush High School. Morgan County triple duels over. The regular season's over. And Coach Lusnop, uh, you're ready for regionals? That'll kick off uh, Friday afternoon. Yes, definitely, definitely ready, uh, ready to go. See how the kids do up at uh, regionals um, today. Today was a good day. Got two, got two dual wins. Saw some good matches. So, uh, yeah, we're ready to go. Four more practices left, and a uh, couple morning practices, and we'll be ready to go uh, next week, next Friday, two o'clock. Okay, we'll be up at Eaton. Eaton, yeah. It's a pretty nice facility. I think we can get three matches in or mats in there. Well, the way they're going to run it is two mats. Um, they 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 said if they run three mats, it's going to be they're not going to be able to make the time limit of 45, 45 minutes in between matches. So they're just going to run two mats, so it goes a little slower um, since it's a two day tournament, you know, and we only have eleven teams there. It'll go pretty quick. So. Well, that's good. We. We did well here with the brush. The brush host, hosted the regionals with the uh, two mat format. It works oh, yeah. good. Three mats with one in the other gym is terrible for oh, the regionals. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, because all the fans like to watch every match. So um, it'll be it'll be nice to have two mats. Uh, it the whole gym is going to be reserved for the fans. So the wrestlers are going to be in the wrestling room the whole time. Um, and so that that's pretty much how they're planning on running it, because Eaton's gym's not that big. So. Yeah, it's been a long time since they held a regional. Oh yeah, and I think the reason they haven't held one is because of how small the gym was. So, um, they're gonna try it this year. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's a, a nice facility up there, but. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, when you try to start packing eleven teams in, it could get a little crowded. Oh yeah. Well, a pretty good day. The little tough on the Wiggins Tigers. They lose 53 to 12, and uh, then they also lose to the Beat Diggers 52 21. But uh, Mustangs with the victory over the Tigers in that uh, first duel. But you came back with uh, victories over both Wiggins and Fort Morgan. Yeah, um, that last that last duel against Wiggins, I. I, there was a couple matches I wanted to see. I wanted to see Kyle bump up and wrestle Walker, and uh, he ended up getting caught there on the edge of the mat. I thought he was out of bounds or close to the edge, so I didn't know if he'd call the pin, but he ended up uh, calling it. And Rosenbrock got his third loss of the year, so um, I don't know if that was good, good for him or uh, bad for him, but we'll see in a week when he's at regionals. Hopefully it's a good thing and he uses it as fire, um, knowing that he's not the best wrestler out there, so uh, knowing that he could be beat on any day. So um, I, th- I think it's good that, that we put him up against the challenge. Um, I was hoping he'd go six minutes, get get a six-minute match in, but once again that fell short. So. Well, he, um, he kind of got overpowered there. He hung his head and got in a he, bad position. Yeah, he did. He he got caught. I mean, all good, even good wrestlers get caught. So um, that's that's pretty much what happened there. But um, that Garrett Walker's a tough kid and a very very strong kid. I think he's he's got to be cutting some weight to get down to 82. And then we got Kyle at 170 who doesn't lose weight at all. Just practices two practices a day and keeps the weight off. But. Um, yeah, I was glad he wanted to go up. He actually came to me and said, I want to wrestle Garrett. So I said, all right, cool. We'll oh. put you there. Well, that's so good. that's good to see. And then that match against Baby, um, Arnaldo Maltos Garcia, and who was the kid he wrestled? Uh, against Wiggins. Wiggins. That match at the end, that was? Uh, Tristan Keefe. Tristan Keefe, yeah, that, that was a good match. But uh, he Baby's just got to know he's got a stall call on him. Um, he's got to come up with that single when he drops to it. He's got to get to his feet with it. Um, I really, I, 
I'm not making excuses, but I don't know about calling a stall call with .7 seconds on the clock. I think he should have called it if he was going to call it a little earlier, you know, rather than the last second to pretty much decide the match. But uh, I would have liked to see it go in overtime, see who had the more had more heart there. But yeah, he was kind of consistent with that call. I think he, he was. was. He was catching a little flack from the Wiggins guys. There. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, Baby was stalling. I mean, it was a good call. I just wish it would have came a little earlier. You know? or, or just just after the buzzer, maybe. After the buzzer, yeah, <laughs> a little late. So yeah, that, that was that was a tough one. I'd like to see him uh, fight it out in overtime. I was kind of hoping for overtime. We haven't had one for a while. Yeah, exactly. See who wins those tough ones. So. Other than that, it was all right. It was a good duel. Um, Fort Morgan, that that was one I knew was going to be close. So, yeah, you against Fort Morgan. Uh, well, we started with Arnaldo in that one, and he uh, lost Tech Fall to a pretty tough senior. Oh yeah, Gherkin's awesome. He's uh, he's a very very tough kid, hard worker. So uh, 19-3. I still I'm a little disappointed in Baby's day, Arnaldo's day. Uh, it just he he didn't look like he did on Thursday night when he beat that top ranked kid. He just looked like he was half asleep today. So um, hopefully he's ready to go Friday because he's going to need to have a lot better day to to make the state tournament. That's for sure. Yeah, we were talking here. If he wrestled like he did Thursday, he'd be standing on the floor of McNichols or oh, uh, yeah. Pepsi Center. Pepsi Center definitely easily. Uh, but, I mean, you wrestle like you do today, and you might not even win a match. That's how tough his weight is at the regional tournament. So um, it depends on – and Baby is a freshman. I understand that. And sometimes he's going to come out and wrestle amazing, and then some. sometimes he's going to wrestle like a freshman. And today he, the freshman in Arnaldo showed up. So um, hopefully Friday, like I said, hopefully – Arnaldo shows up, and he's a uh, advanced freshman and wrestling like he can. Because when he wrestles like he can, he could beat anyone in the state. So he's got um, he's got some amazing physical tools for a freshman. Oh, right? definitely, definitely. And Bo Rocha, he gave you a great day. Was, he always gives you what he's got. He did. He uh, he he wrestled real tough. I was hoping we'd get two pins out of him, but uh, he he ended up wrestling real hard today and. Won, won both his matches, one by fall, I think, right? And mm-hmm. then the other one, he uh, it was actually a pretty close match against, who was it, Bo Rocha versus Cody Carpenter. Yeah, that was a, that was a tight match. Yeah. It ended up being 6-2, but it was a lot closer than that. Look, that's the one he gave up 11 pounds in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's yeah. stepping up there a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, he is. And Jake Morrow, uh had a tough time with that uh, young kid Cameron Leon from Wiggins. He did, you know that he's one of those stocky kids, though hard to hard to hit a lot of moves on. Um, just hard to get to his legs because his legs are so short. But at the same time, I thought I was happy. I was more happy with the performance Jake gave against that Cameron Leon than I was with the performance against uh, Fritzler. Fritzler, yeah, from Fort Morgan. Even though the outcomes were completely different 10 to 2 and a fall against Fritzler I still was more happy with the uh, performance against Leon because he was in control that whole match even though even though it was only 10 2 and he didn't pin him I was still I was happy to see his feet moving and looking good on his feet um, and getting a couple turns on top so then we go to 160 Tyler Stratman uh lost a uh, tough one to Chris Shriver in a match that he was kind of uh, in control of, and then kind of the momentum shifted, and then he ends up losing. Yeah, he uh, came out. I think he was up four right off the back or up five right off the back, and then all of a sudden gets reversed right to his back. So uh, that that's a tough, tough way to lose. I mean, it, it was a close match. So I think the final score was 8-9. So... Um, those are those once again are matches next week. You got to win those those eight nine matches. You got to come away with the W. Otherwise, your trip to state is not going to happen. So, um, those are matches I wanted to see this week, and that's good. We saw a couple of them, and um, hopefully next week the outcome's different. And we kind of talked about Kyle Rosenbrock's matches. Uh, uh, 
Then you jump to Joe Carr when no matches today. That's tough. He'd like yeah, to get he two definitely two. wants some matches, especially in front of the home crowd. But what can you do? And Oscar Soto, he went out and took down Lane Vansky, and Vansky's a load. Yeah, he's a big boy. Um, I I really, we're going to spend a lot of time with Soto this week getting him ready for regionals. He had two penalty calls there, full Nelson and uh, locked hands, I think. And um, I, I, those are the things you can't do at the conference tournament or the regional tournament. So uh, we're going to need to work on some top moves with Soto and work on our feet a little bit and uh, get him ready to go for for Friday because there is a good shot he can make the state tournament. Well, you're you're lucky to have three heavyweights banging heads oh, in yeah, the room. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That is, that's a that's a definite positive. So to mention heavyweights, we got Jose Rodriguez, too. He's up at the JV state tournament right now, and uh, he was in the quarters as far as I knew this morning. So um, he's doing well up there. And then we had uh, Mikey Gutierrez from brush as well at 138 pounds who went two and two up at the tournament so um he had a good showing that's a tough tournament there's 64 kids in his bracket um and i think in uh jose's there's 45 kids so it's a big tournament well good he needs that needs that experience he's only a sophomore yeah definitely both of them so cool and then we go to jason moreno he's uh Stepped up at 106. He's having a tough time, but he's ended up with three victories on the year. Yep, Jason. Jason's doing good. He shows up and works hard. Um, he he. The experience is just not there for him yet. Um, he'll he'll get better as we keep going. He's got pretty good hips. He just uh, he's just not mature enough, you know, not strong enough yet to hang with some of those six pounders though. So. So uh, Andy's only a freshman. He's got a long way to go. So we'll keep working with him, and I think he'll do fine down the road. Then Conrad Cole uh, picked up a pin win at 120 in his first match, and no match the second uh, duel with Wiggins. Yeah, he uh, Conrad wrestled like Conrad. Dominated. No matches for Mackie Sandoval. Then Zane Fowle. Uh, he had a tough time against that first guy. Oh, yeah, Ian Weinstrom's obviously, <laughs> he's the real deal. He puts his whole life on the line for uh, wrestling, goes hard every, I mean, he goes to Denver every Sunday. He he is the type of kid that needs to get into a college and wrestle, and uh, he, Zane Powell is happy that he never gave up on himself. I mean, it's very easy to get taken down eight times in a match and just quit and just say, who cares anymore? I want to get pinned rather than teched. But, you know, he didn't get pinned or teched, and I thought that was a win for Zane because we wrestled him at Brighton last week too, and it was it was ugly. I mean, he was taking us down left and right, and finally you saw Zane just quit. And this week he didn't do that. He, he went head-to-head, toe-to-toe with that guy and uh, with Ian and, and did well. I was happy for him. And then his second match against Wiggins was probably the best he's looked all year. Came out came out hard, which is good because he needs a confidence booster right before uh, regionals, and I think that's a good match to get it in. He uh, came out and teched that kid. Actually, I think he pinned him. He ended up pinning him in yeah, the second period. it would have been a tech, but he took him to his back and pinned him, so right. that was good. Yeah, it was 14-1, to 1, I think, or 15-1 to 1 going into the second yeah. period. And uh, got him dumped over and pinned him there at the yeah. end. So that's an extra team point. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, talked about baby. That's about your lineup for uh, state. So. Yeah, Peterson. Peterson wrestled real well today, oh, yeah. too. Did we talk against about Wood. Did I jump over? Justin Wood and oh, Peterson that was, a good was match. probably one of the matches, the matches of the night. And uh, Peterson's just looking, I mean, he is. He is looking solid. I could see him making the state finals. Might, might even win a state title if he keeps wrestling the way he's wrestling. He's, he's wrestling the best he has in the two years I've coached him. So, um, it's nice to see. Yeah, and I don't think uh, on the mats uh, give him a whole lot of respect, but I think he'll be. Yeah. Well, he's up to seven this week, but um, definitely should be. I I believe should be top four. So, yeah, I've 
pulled up our regional uh, rankings. Is uh, got a few here scheduled by on the mat. Yeah, we got Conrad number one should come out of the region winning that. It's going to be tough though. I mean, he's got one, two, three, seven, and eight in our region, so uh, it, it's definitely a tough regional for Conrad. And uh, already wrestling Ruben Lucero from Valley four times, it's going to be tough to beat a kid five times in a year. So. Yeah, and I think Vincent Casado gave him a pretty tough matchup at Holy Family, didn't he? Yeah, well, Vincent actually beat Mackey bad. Well, that, that's beat Mackey 12 3 or something like that. So he's a very, very tough kid. So that'll be a good match to watch as well. And Mackey's ranked uh, number two behind Prieto from uh, Holy Family. Yep, and Mackey's got like this mental block with Julian Prieto from Holy Family. He's a. Uh, He's we've wrestled him like four times and we've never beat him. So hopefully he can get over the hump and uh, take him take him at regionals. So then uh, 126 uh, Zane Fowles not listed on that list. He wasn't. He was ranked last week. Um, either way, it's a very very tough region with uh, one two with five kids ranked and uh, we were the six kid ranked, but we dropped out this week because uh, Zane's been going through some tough times on the map. But, there's, I mean, there's no reason he can't qualify. Uh, he can beat any of those kids on that list. So um, it's it's definitely definitely in sight for Zane Fowl. Can't count him out. And then 32s, yeah, Peterson. Uh, we, needed, we need to get Satello up there, and I believe we can. We lost to him 3-2 at uh, Florence. We lost to him three to two, but um, the way he took us down in the first period was kind of sloppy. Uh, Alec knows it; we know it. Um, we just gave up, gave up a sloppy takedown, and it's not going to happen happen this week coming up with the way Alec's wrestling. So I can see him coming out on top at regionals this week. Cool. Well, let me remind you: this is ten ten KSIR, Brush Fort Morgan on your dial. And we go to 138 pounds. Arnaldo, uh, that's a tough bracket, too. Yeah, there's five ranked kids, and he's the lowest ranked kid out of that. But you look at this, he beat the, he already beat the number seven ranked kid in the state. We've never wrestled Zach Miller. And then uh, we lost to the number two ranked kid in the state, Joel Contreras from Sterling, uh, six to two. So there's a way, if Baby shows up and wrestles, there's a way he could he could definitely come away winning that bracket you never know and uh it, it just like we said earlier it all depends on which which baby shows up you know then 145 uh Bo Roach is pick number two in our region yeah definitely and I think uh going into going into the regional we should probably be ranked number one there we should be a number one seed just because of criteria reasons we've never wrestled Zeke Garcia however at Brighton last week Zeke Garcia went two and out and uh the kid that he got beat by Bo Rocha beat pretty bad so um I definitely think on the mats not giving as much credit to Bo as he should get um but other than that I think I think we'll definitely win that weight as well 145. And, of course, 152, uh, Jake Morrow's picked behind uh, Jackson Wright of Valley. So how do you pick that match? Uh, well, we wrestled him once, and that was at the beginning of the year. Jake was not wrestling as good as he is now. So, um, But then again, Jackson Wright might not be the same. That's going to be... That's going to be probably the OW right there, whoever wins that match. That's definitely a... Uh, that or 13s, 152s or 113s is definitely a state finals match in the regional finals. So um, that'll be a great one to watch. Okay, then we jump up to 160. Uh, Tyler Stratman's uh, right. He's marked fifth, I think. I don't know. There yeah, might have been somebody picked ahead of him. He's the marked fifth in there, but um, we've already beat the kid that's marked fourth. Um, and the Strasburg kid we've never seen, but those of you that follow wrestling, Strasburg comes and uh, usually ends up laying an egg at regional, so we can just hope that hope do, that happens. Do we say that on the air? No. Okay. I, ho- I hope. <laughs> I hope that happens, but that's just a coach's standpoint. Oh, yeah. we gotta we got to cheer our kids on. Tyler's 
Tyler can wrestle with anybody, and then he can look at the lights sometimes. He's, yeah, exactly. That's what so, Tyler shows up. Exactly. I mean, he came out and wrestled great last week, beat Villalobos from uh, Highland, wrestled probably one of the better matches of the year. That kid was ranked from uh, Highland and came out, beat him, and then wrestled Matt Wartman, who's number six in the state, very tough. So um, it, it all depends. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler comes out that Patrick Gore from Valley's tough. He's a tough kid. So, um, other than that, I can see Tyler if he's wrestling his best, definitely getting a trip to the Pepsi Center. So, then of course we talked about Kyle earlier quite a bit, but he's got a tough bracket. He does. He does. We've already pinned Larry Bowl, who they got at fourth. Um, but Virtuga from Fort Lupton up at Brighton last week he I think he broke his ribs so I don't know if he'll be there we'll have to see I doubt he'll sit out but we'll have to see I don't know if he'll be 100% and then do it I've watched him a couple times and uh, I think I think we can get every kid there at 70 so hoping to come away with the champion regional champion there then we jump to the on the mat stuff to 195 Tristan Teeters uh, pick number three out of our region Definitely a tough kid, too, Teeter. Um, just Teeter's one of those kids, not a whole heck of a lot of athletic ability, but you never know what Teeter's going to show up. I've seen him pin some very good kids. He's got some moves where he'll catch you, and um, he definitely could. So uh, I, I see him taking no worse than top three at regionals, definitely. Then Joe Carwin uh, picked second out of our region. Uh, Dalton Shoup's got a lot of experience on him, but. Yeah, Dalton Shoup, state champ from last year, but uh, Carwin, I definitely, I I think Carwin can beat anyone in the state. So, and then we got Jose at eighty fives. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but Jose right now is at the JV state tournament, and that'll be Soto in there. But That's, once again, I mean, they got Jose at three, and Soto beat Jose Rodriguez in a wrestle off two out of three times. So. Um, it's his to take and his to run away with. Hopefully he can come show up. That's a tough region at 285s, too. 220s is another very tough one. One, three, four, five, six in the state, all of, all out of our region. All so out of our region, yeah. That'll the only tough. one missing, one through six, is the number two from Trinidad. So. Well, on the mat, has you taken ten kids. Would you settle for that? On the mat, uh, I, I'm going to be happy with... I'd be happy with 10. I'd like to get 11 or 12 in. Sounds good. The truth. <laughs> okay. So. okay, Coach, that's uh, going to set us up. That'll be, uh, of course, here on 1010 KSR, complete coverage of state and regionals. And that state coverage will kick off the 21st of February, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I think. Yeah, 3 o'clock. Not sure. About the same for regionals next Friday. Yep, regionals, weigh-ins are at 2, so, yeah, wrestling will start at three or four might be weigh-ins at one i'd have to get my ducks in a row there i've got a seat here but it didn't give us time so yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll double check that john beltran will pass that along to cool. all our listeners and awesome uh, we'll have a great time up there so good job i hear you're patriot league champions and, definitely uh, patriot league champs the kids worked really hard that was the uh, first goal on the list team goals this year win a patriot league title win a regional title and then take top three at the state tournament so um this is a team i said just because it's top three at the state tournament don't settle for that this is a team that should um even shoot for a state title so yes their goal is top three but at the same time a state title isn't far out of reach if you're top three so they need to be shooting shooting for the stars there and try and try and work for that state title because it's in reach definitely that's yeah, going to be, you never know when you have that many young wrestlers, they get yeah. up there and see those big lights and stuff. That's that's one thing. I mean, I, I hope we can just take a lot of kids. That's why I want 11 or 12 kids to go, and I just want them all to see see uh, see the atmosphere up there and feel how it feels. Uh, it's def- definitely a different ball game when you get to the state tournament. It's like no other Chassa event in the state. So it's it's definitely a mindset you got to have and if to you, win matches. 
you know, that Parade of Champions doesn't give you the chills, you're not a wrestling fan. No, I know. It's it's a great time. It even gives my wife the chills. So it it it's something you you have to experience sometime in your life. So yeah, it's an amazing event, and uh, it's brought out by a lot of amazing kids that just put their heart and souls into the sport. Oh yeah, I uh, I mean. My grandparents show up every year just, I mean, even if I wasn't coaching, they'd show up every year for that state tournament. They just love it. All wrestling fans around the around the state of Colorado have to experience the state tournament at one point in their life. Um, my, my wife's dad actually was a wrestler in college, and he flies back from, he works out in Arizona. He flies home to Colorado every year for the state tournament to watch it. So he just he absolutely loves it. He uh he grew up in Arizona and he says there's no state tournament like Colorado's. He he went to the Arizona state title and he said Colorado just does a great job with it. So Well, that's neat. And uh, of course you get an opportunity to work with some great kids and make them better, be well, an influence on their life, so Definitely. Huge responsibility, but uh, a lot of you get a lot out of it. A lot out of it. Okay, well, thanks for thanks stopping by. Thanks a bunch. By. Thanks for the whole season, covering the whole season. That was, what, about 20 duels you covered this year? Oh, well, not quite, but uh, no, okay. <laughs> I want to thank these guys on our sponsor list. They're they're awesome, and I hope our listeners uh, will run through those in a little bit here Okay. and say thank you to all our sponsors because they really make it possible. Definitely. Yeah, thanks to everyone who makes this possible. This is a a great deal that uh Brush has people broadcasting their uh their matches, especially you. Thanks a bunch for doing oh, this. Oh, it's a joy for us. I get in free. I get in free. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well our owner and owners, Alec and Christy Creighton, uh they're huge sports fans, and it's great to have them on our side. John Beltran helping out, and all the guys back at the radio station. And of course, like I say, all the sponsors. So Awesome. And we'll have a great show lined up for you for regionals and state. Sounds good. I'll try them, and coach. make my way up. Thanks a bunch. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll see try to sneak you up there. All right, <laughs> okay. we'll see you there. We'll see you next Friday up at uh, Eaton. Coach Troy Lucenhops, thanks for, thanks for stopping by. You better go check on those guys. <laughs> okay. Okay, that wraps up our coverage pretty much. Uh, that's, uh, I want to take pers- just a moment to thank Ingmar Phillips Insurance, T.O. Charlie's, State Farm Insurance, Office of Greg Mullen, Ehrlich Toyota East, B&B Appliance, High Plains Bank, Platte Valley Hearing Center, Ackley Building Center, Valley View Villa, Stubbs Gas and Oil, Morgan Federal Bank, Central Auto Parts, Premier Farm Credit, Northern Colorado Title, Bijou Tea Quest, Equitable Savings and Loan, Willow Coffee Tea and Smoothies, and the Morgan Community College, Colorado Plains Medical Center, Hometown Auto and Hardware, Brush Grocery Cart, and Buildings by Design. All of our uh, through the year sponsors, thank you for helping us out, and it's been a lot of fun. We'll be back. Uh, Friday afternoon with the uh, regional coverage and then state coverage will kick off the 21st of February. I want to thank Rose for running the board and of course all of you for tuning in. Beat Diggers uh, winner of two duels. Uh, let's run through that. As we started off as uh, Fort Morgan wrestled uh, the Wiggins Tigers come off with a 53-12 to victory. Then uh, the Beat Diggers uh, wrestled uh, Fort Morgan and won that duel 42-30. We came back with the Wiggins Tigers against the Brush Beat Diggers and the whole Speed Diggers win 52-21. So that wraps up our coverage. We'll see you back next Friday here on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com.